Hello. Hmm. Hi, Ma. Hi. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How about you? Me too. Cool. All right. Is do signing now? I mean, we received the link right now. Okay. From Mike, so I think she is she is connecting to that link. All right. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm sorry for the delay. I didn't see the link before on time. Okay. No problem. Let's continue. So yes. We were discussing serialization and deserialization mechanism. Yeah. We could finish a serialization, that is, writing the object state into a resource. And we could uh, write employee objects. Mm. So, in this process, whatever the objects you are writing, so employee objects, I am writing onto the file. So, I need to create a class employee and it has to extend from, I mean, it has to implement serializable interface. So, yeah. write a class and implement mm -hmm. serializable interface. This is the rule. Mm -hmm. And here, the serializable interface is an interface without methods. This one. No methods are present in it. It is just empty interface. Mm -hmm. Such interfaces are known as tagging interfaces or yeah. marking interface and we have another interface such a thing available in core Java that is clonable interface. So this is one of the important interview questions. They may ask you uh, what is marking interface. So marking interface or tagging interfaces are the interfaces which don't have methods in it. They are empty. Mm -hmm. Examples okay. are serializable interface and clonable interface. Please do remember mm -hmm. this. So okay. the serializable interface or marking interface will mark the objects that can be serialized. All right. So that is why it is known as marking interface. Then, mm -hmm. so let's go for deserialization. 
in this serialization, we need five input stream. So we have already serialized the employee object, this employee object into a file emp.txt. Last session. Yes. Yeah. We are going to read that emp.txt and reconstruct the employee object by looking into that emp.txt contents. This is what we are going to do with the deserialization mechanism. So okay. I am writing here. For this, I need file input stream. Yes, those two. File input stream. Goes to new file <coughs> stream. So I have to give that particular file where my file input stream is going to read the data. That is nothing but emp.txt, this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. this. Yes. And this will throw an error. So let me address that exception. Mm. Yes. I have done it in two steps. And this is unhandled exception, file not found exception. So let me surround it with a try and catch. And I am going to write here some exception occurred. So in a SOP statement, I am just copying this and displaying it. An exception occurred while reading yeah. the data from the file. Just after reading, now I am going to change this to object input stream. Mm. Object input stream. Uh, we need to read the employee object present in it. So object input stream equals to null and I am going to define it here. Yeah, because then you yeah. will get into stream if I so this you your fires. Mm. Now unhandled exception. So I will exception. While object is reading it may throw IO exception, so add cache class. Mm -hmm. So I'll write here an exception occurred while reading while reconstructing the, the object. employee object. Yes, I got this. Now, read the employee object. So, on OIS dot read, it is a read object. Mm. So, this mm. will return OBJ CT object. Mm. So, let me hold that in. Employee. employee 1, employee this one. And it returns OBJE CT object, so I need to downcast. Employee. To employee 1. Right. And this one may throw class not found exception. So I need to add cast class. So here I say an error, an exception occurred while, while 
Amen. The text into corresponding employee object. Employee object. I got it. Yes. Now, I need to display the employee contents. So I can write a two string method here in my employee class. Yeah. To, to describe the employee. Okay. Mm -hmm. Return. Return. Uh, employee ID. Is nothing but this one. Yeah, I Plus operator. Yeah. Then. Employee name. name. And salary. Nothing but EMT salary. Mm. Yes. Done. Now I can print that here. System dot out dot print ln I write here in a SOP message. I just write the employee object constructed successfully. Then I'm displaying that employee object here. To 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 string. Am I muting this now? Yes. Yes. Serialization process finished. Employee object constructed successfully, and the employee ID, the ID, name, and salary are. You can see mm. this employee object. I can I stored the state. So this is hundred, being the employee ID, name Emma, and salary two thousand. Yeah. So that's the deserialization mechanism. Now, I have a case where I don't want to store the employee salary. So there, there may be certain cases that uh, the attributes of the class, some attributes I don't want to state. I don't yeah. want to store. Then you can mark them as transient. This is another important uh, yeah. Interview question. Mm -hmm. How do you make some variables uh, prevent storing the state of the state of the object into the resource? Okay. Particular attributes storing uh, persisting both means the same. That is marking that variable as transient. Now I am re executing this. I marked employees already as transient. Now observe. Skip zero. Yeah. Salary is zero. Salary is zero because salary is data type is integer. So while reconstructing, I mean to say while serialization itself. Uh, this value will not be stored. Right. And while constructing an object as the employee object has salary, and it is of integer type, so 
when reconstructing it gets a, a default value zero. Got mm. it? Got it. Got it. That's about uh, serialization and deserialization mechanism, which is uh, mm. one of the important uh, topics for interview. So when uh, we we do transient on a string, the default null. is now. Of course, null. Right. So JVM provides the default values for primitive data types, right? So we already discussed that uh, de default values long ago. If you remember, you can refer to my file. I mentioned the default values also. Mm. I remember. Boolean. Mm. For Boolean, what would be the default value? False. False is a default False. value for right. Boolean. Yeah. yeah. Excuse me, sir. Yes. About the tagging uh, interface. Ah. You say that the, uh, it's an interface with uh, without with empty method or just right. empty without anything inside right. it. Right. What is the, the I mean why why it is important to have such kind of uh, interface uh, why do we have here in this scenario with that interface it is going to mark the argument to say I have written a class I have written a class and I am implementing that particular uh, serializable interface which is empty so what this interface will do is it will mark the objects of employee to store the state into resource, to store the state into a file. So its purpose is only to mark the objects. So these objects can be marked. Suppose I have a rectangle okay. class and uh, a rectangle class is not implementing the serializable interface. Then okay. you cannot store the rectangle object into the file okay. because someone should mark only these objects are eligible to store, only these things. Then who is going to mark here? The serializable interface is going to mark those objects. How? By telling, I mean to say we have to, we programmers have to implement the class of that particular object to implement this serializable interface. Only then we can store the objects into the file. So its purpose is to mark those objects to store them into a resource. Okay. okay. Then, yes. Today we will discuss JDBC related thing. So JDBC stands for Java Database Connectivity. So what the JDBC is for? So JDBC uh, are you aware of uh, any database, maybe Oracle, MySQL, anything? Simple statements, SQL statements, creating a table, inserting yeah, some MySQL. data into that. MySQL, fine, very good. So here, MySQL. So MySQL is an open source product, right? Right, yes. And it is from Oracle. Yeah. Oracle is the proprietor of uh, open, uh, MySQL. Yeah. So the thing is, uh, Java programming language can communicate with the database with the help of JDBC components. So JDBC API we say. API. So application programming interface. 
So nothing but uh, this API contains classes, interfaces. So when classes in the sense attributes and methods. Attributes and methods. So there are JDBC related classes and interfaces that would help in Java program connecting with database. So let me write here the Java client we say. So Java client connects with a database. So relational database management system by making use of JDBC API. So by using JDBC API, we can connect to relational database management system. This relational database management system may be MySQL, Oracle, SQL Server, Sybase, Ingress, Postgres, etc. So any of the database. So a Java program can communicate with any of the database. So the thing is, this JDBC API has particularly interfaces. So it has interfaces. So let me write here. It has interfaces. So interfaces means they have methods without any implementation. So yes. someone should implement that inter uh, that interface methods, right? So that way we can, yes. I mean, those interfaces, I mean, we uh, that that would be meaningful. So interfaces yes. are generally used to declare a protocol. So someone in the future, whoever is implementing this interface, should follow this protocol. Should uh, follow this protocol means to he he or she, I mean to say those classes have to provide implementation for the methods that are present in the interfaces. So here for these interfaces, who is going to provide implementations? Means these owners of the various databases are providing inter providing implementation. So they are mm -hmm. providing implementation and they are providing those implementations in a separate file known as jar file. So jar in the sense Java archive. So I write here. So here the Java client, so Java client in the sense Java program. So let me write here. This one, Java client. So Java client is nothing but Java program. So Java program can communicate with database using JDBC API. So this part, this part. So here, Java client needs a driver here. So driver. So let me write here. A driver. To connect with relational database management system. So yes. this driver implementations are provided in Java. So if your Java program is communicating with MySQL, then the owner of MySQL, that is Oracle Corporation, has already provided a jar file. We need to configure that jar file. So why do we need to okay. configure that jar file? Because in JDBC API, we have interfaces alone. Those interfaces implementation are with uh, Oracle's uh, MySQL jar file. So here the file name with MySQL is MySQL connector jar file. Suppose if you are mm -hmm. working with Oracle, it would be OJDBC jar file. Mm -hmm. It right. would be OJDBC 14, the latest one. And if you are working with the DB2, DB2 jar file, and we have another file DB2 CC jar file. So these are the examples for various jar files. So I write here for MySQL it is. 
and here this is for oracle yeah rakho and this is for ibm db2 yes so we will be working with mysql so we need to okay. download that uh, mysql connector jar file and we need to configure with our project uh, only the then project. our java program can communicate with mysql if we don't configure okay. this uh, mysql connector jar file then it will throw an error class not found so driver okay. classes implementations that are present in this mysql connector are not found it says so here almost the proprietors of all the databases are providing these jar files assume a database proprietor is not providing implementation for a implementation uh, in the jar file then that database cannot be used with java and java is of course very widely used in the market so it means the proprietor of that particular database who is not providing implementation who i who is not providing a jar file and the people cannot use the database when they are working with java yes so it means he, that a proprietor is losing some projects right yeah. right that is why almost uh, the database vendors are providing the jar files so jar okay. file has the driver implementations so i told you java program needs a driver to connect with database so that driver implementations are provided in the mysql connector jar file mm -hmm. so when we talk about driver so driver is an interface so here mm -hmm. the types of drivers so i say there are various types of drivers so based upon their limitations so we have type 1 type 1 driver likewise type 2 type 3 type 4 driver so we will explore these uh, types of drivers what are they and what are their advantages disadvantages now okay so let me open a file So here you can see the types of drivers. So there are four types of drivers. So type one driver, the name for the type one driver is JDBC ODBC bridge driver. We say you need to remember the names also. Okay. Type two driver, partially native driver, and type three driver, JDBC net protocol driver, or it is a purely Java driver. Java driver, so, JDBC yeah. net protocol driver, we say. Mm. Then type four driver is a native protocol driver, or it is a purely Java driver. Let me. Ah, huh. type four driver is purely Java driver actually. It is completely written in Java. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Type four driver is also known as. in driver this is another right. alternative okay. so what is type one driver so jdbc odbc bridge plus we have odbc sir what this odbc stands for i write here odbc open database connectivity so odbc stands for open database connectivity so type one driver has both jdbc odbc bridge as well as odbc driver also so this type of driver provides database access using odbc drivers and the figure here whatever is shown is the architecture for this type one driver so here you can see this yeah. box rectangular box this one particularly is an application i mean is a yeah. project so here we have a java program so java client we say java client is going to connect with the database using 
ODBC drivers there. ODBC. Yeah. So how it is going to establish a connection with ODBC drivers is first it makes use of JDBC driver that further connects with the bridge actually and this bridge is going to communicate with the ODBC driver and then these ODBC drivers are getting connected with the actual mm -hmm. database. So this is the architecture. Right. So here the bridge between the JDBC and ODBC bridge drivers. So the bridge between JDBC driver and ODBC driver. So I am talking about this bridge. This bridge. Yeah. Translate the JDBC operations into ODBC operations. Operations okay. means nothing but those uh, insert, update, delete, select statements. So those okay. statements are translated from JDBC to ODBC. Who is going yes. to take care of that? This JDBC ODBC bridge is going to take care. Yeah. The performance of this application is reduced because of uh, the time consumed in translating those operations from JDBC to ODBC. Yeah. Means that uh, type 1 driver will not give high performance because of this translation present between yes. JDBC driver and ODBC driver. So the advantages and disadvantages of this. So advantages, it supports all types of databases. Performance is acceptable, not much high. Yeah. And it is suitable for a migration of projects. So migration of projects in the sense when, when uh, one project is using MySQL and the, uh, the owner of that project has asked to migrate to uh, any other database like DB2. Then yes. this, this mm -hmm. particular type 1 driver can be used. Yeah. Disadvantages. So it is limited to only Windows operating system. Okay. okay. And it is not suitable for performance oriented applications as performance is low. Mm -hmm. But it can be acceptable for a non performance oriented applications. Okay. Right. So these are the disadvantages. So driver specifications, the name of the driver is JDBC ODBC bridge plus it has ODBC driver. Mm -hmm. And here uh, an example for driver class is given. So here in the word file, the sun.jdbc.odbc JDBC ODBC driver, this is the driver name actually. What mm -hmm. driver it is particularly Oracle driver. So I told you MySQL, Sybase, you know, SQL Server, various databases, every database has its own driver. So the example that is present in this word file is a, an Oracle's driver. So that's what you can see, Sun. So Sun was the proprietor of or I mean to say Java. Then later on the Java is purchased, I mean to say Sun uh, was sold to Oracle Corporation and Oracle Corporation being the owner, right? Right. right. So that transition went around in 2009. So right from 2009, Oracle being the proprietor of Java technology. Yeah. So here, so this is a driver example. It contains an URL, username, password. So the thing is, uh, to connect to database, we need to do username and password, right? Yes. So this thing, username and password. And we have okay. an URL here. So this URL, so JDBC colon, ODBC colon, DSN name. So data source name we say. So this data source name is a thing which we give during database installation. So DSN name we say. So URL is another thing which we use along with the username password to connect with database. Okay. So you are, we will perform an example soon. Uh, once right. we go through these various types of drivers, I will write an example, uh, our Java program connecting with database. Okay, great. So then, type 2 driver. So type 2 driver, that is native API driver or partial Java driver, we we'll say. Mm -hmm. So in case of native API driver, so there is no need for a bridge because the native API drivers are stored in database library 
share a common interface with the database you can see the picture mm. so this is the project our java application is using jdbc driver to connect with the database using native database like this library so it has native database library so we don't need a bridge here yeah so the native api driver converts the jdbc commands may be select insert update delete because we are going to fire these commands uh, uh, to, to connect with database after connecting with database yeah so this native api driver convert the jdbc commands into database specific commands yes okay then we can use the jdbc commands directly extract data from a database using a select statement mm. so it uh, looks like a there is a direct connectivity between jdbc driver and the database but actually there is a native database library which is taking care of those actions yeah for us it is like a, we are firing the self statement and dml statement directly on the database mm -hmm. so this has one restriction that the client must have some binary code loaded into its machine that binary code is nothing but this native database libraries are to be installed on the client yeah. machine yeah advantages so it is compatible with all the operating systems and it mm -hmm. is good in performance compared to type 1 driver so type 2 driver has higher performance compared to type, type. 1 driver mm -hmm. yeah and it is suitable for making intranet applications disadvantages so it is not suitable for internet applications mm -hmm. so internet applications in the sense an application that can be executed on browser browser yeah. mm -hmm. for example the servlets and jsps uh, which we will see post the jdbc sessions are internet applications mm -hmm. the applets which you might have heard they are tiny web applications yeah so we need to install the data library in the client machine Okay. So that's what I told you. This native library, okay, are to be installed on client machine. The machine. So driver specifications. So here, uh, the name that is native API partial part. It is partly Java driver, and the driver class name. They have given one driver class name that is Oracle driver. So you can mm -hmm. see here, the Oracle driver. Whereas previously yes. the driver name was JDBC. ODBC driver. Yeah. Whereas here it is directly Oracle driver. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oracle driver. And URL would be having this kind of thing. It has it involves the IP address and port number. So what this port number is? So port number uh, on our operating system whenever we install a software. For example, MySQL database I have installed. Then MySQL can listen to notifications that are sent by operating system with the help of port number. That is, every software which we install on operating system will have a port number through which it can listen to the notifications that are sent by operating system. Yes. So this port number yeah. is nothing but an integer number. Mm -hmm. uh, for MySQL. The port number is double three zero six. For okay. Oracle, it is one five zero two. Likewise, every database has its own port number. Yes. So this port number is involved in URL. Okay. Along with the port number, you can see IP address of the machine yes. also involved. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, for example, my 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 machine, my 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 laptop, mm -hmm. my laptop. Has MySQL database, yeah, and it has Java also. So my Java is going to connect with the MySQL database, which is present on my machine. Your machine, of yeah. course. My machine is connected to a LAN. Yes. And somewhere in a LAN, there is a machine which has the MySQL server over there. Mm -hmm. It means I don't have MySQL on my machine. I am going to connect to. That machine which has MySQL server installed. Yeah. Then I need to give the IP address of that machine which has MySQL server. Yes. MySQL yeah. server. 
Okay. 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 Suppose MySQL is available on my machine, then I will be giving the address of IP address of my machine over there. Yeah. So yeah. what it will be local host generally. Yeah. So local host uh, says that you are telling about your IP address. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then of course username, password. So for MySQL it would be root and root, right? Right. 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 Then type three driver. So type three driver is a JDBC net driver or it is purely Java driver. So JDBC net driver pro provides database connectivity by translating the JDBC commands into database independent network protocols that are sent to middleware server. Mm -hmm. So we need to have a middleware server. So here you can see uh, the application space with Java program connecting with the database here using the JDBC driver which is further connecting with JDBC net driver. So here the middleware server, middleware libraries are to be installed additionally. Okay. So the middleware server translates the database independent network protocols into database specific protocols and sends it to the respective databases. Mm -hmm. Maybe MySQL, maybe Oracle or maybe Sybase, any, any database. The database receives these protocols and responds to the query specified in the JDBC command. Query may be select query, insert, update or delete. Mm -hmm. So we need to install these uh, libraries, middleware, survey, middleware services uh, to make use of this type 3 driver. Yes, so yes. here it provides a three tier solution. This three tier solution is a costly. So these middleware yeah. services are expensive actually. Yeah. Advantage, it is possible to implement a pure Java client and it is possible to swap between databases without affecting the Java program. That is, I can change MySQL database to Oracle or Oracle to some other sideways databases without making changes to our Java program. Mm -hmm. And it provides a three-tier solution because there are middleware services involved here. That is why we say three-tier solution. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you might have heard about this uh, uh, two-tier architecture, three-tier architecture, n-tier architecture of computers, right? In two-tier yes. architecture, there will be client and server, right? Yeah, you're right. In three-tier architecture, along with the client and server, there will be middle tier, right? Yeah. So here, the middleware services are to be installed in the middle tier here. That is why it says uh, three-tier here, okay? Okay. And disadvantages, it is costly since the driver is vendor specific. And driver yeah. specifications, so JDBC, net and purely Java driver and the driver class name is, so you can see it is something like this, driver. Mm -hmm. And an URL would be here, then username, password and let's move to type 4 driver. So type 4 driver that is native protocol, it is completely written in Java, it is also known as thin driver. So here native protocol drivers directly communicate with the databases by converting JDBC commands to database specific mm -hmm. protocols. So a middleware server is not required here. Mm -hmm. You can see here in our application space, Java application is directly interacting with the database using JDBC driver manager. So we will be using type 4 driver in our examples in our upcoming session. So here the main advantage of this type of driver is higher performance. Yes, yeah. The industry recommends mm -hmm. type 4 driver yes. and which is oh, platform okay. independent. Then advantages, it can access the, I mean, can access the database directly without any additional software, thereby increasing the performance. The performance and yes. it is platform independent because it is written in Java. And some examples of driver specifications they are given. So here, no, yeah, I mean it's a wrong thing because they are talking about JDBC, ODBC bridge. Ignore this thing. Yeah. Ignore this thing. 
and here you can see thin so which says that this is a thin driver yes. in url so here uh, type 4 or type 2 are recommended mostly so we will be using type 4 which gives higher performance yes. so okay. these are the things about the various types of drivers and mm -hmm. for now i am winding up the session and we shall continue tomorrow at the same time okay all right uh, hey, do you have any queries from this session no fine we shall write an example tomorrow connecting okay. to the database fetch some data and display it okay all right all right ask. i'll share this word file yeah. with you you can browse through this word file okay yeah. great all right. okay okay thank you welcome